I kid when I say this, but I really mean it. I, I think companies spend on marketing last. Like it's yeah. the last thing they put in place. And we've got to know it by the number of emergency phone calls we receive. Oh, I got yeah. this thing coming up in a month. And could you do some marketing for us? And we're like, could you have called us six months ago? Right. We've been right. a lot better, right? right. We're going to have a real problem here. Like that's going to be, you know, we haven't laid the groundwork. So it's the last thing they add. And it's the first thing they cut. Welcome to Can Heat, a podcast brought to you by Liger Partners. We are marketing and operations experts bred for our skills and magic. I'm Whitney Mendoza. And I'm Eric Holtzclaw. And I have a question for you today. Okay. This is all operations. Yes, we're going to fall heavily on the operations side of the yes. marketing and operations piece. So we were having a conversation earlier about how it's easier for smaller companies to move quickly so like if a new technology comes out and they want to switch it up and say we're not going to do this anymore we're going to do this they can make a decision and move forward and make that change yeah. but when you're a corporation or a bigger business if you will and maybe you've got 50 employees instead of 10 or 20 five thousand employees yeah, yeah. Oof, that too right it's harder to move quickly right like there's a process of okay everybody's got to meet and agree about it and then we got to look at all these different factors so that can cause a lot of problems because yeah. sometimes you got to be able to move quickly right so how do you do that if you're big how do you move fast when you're big so the way that i've seen work most effectively is that you have to treat the big company like a small company oh okay and that's a mistake that i see companies make all the time so they'll decide to go after a new initiative a new focus and instead of treating it as something different or separate, yeah. they keep it as part of the overall umbrella. And that causes a couple of problems. One, it gets hidden. So if it's not doing well, if it's suffering like this new new idea, it doesn't have any boundaries around it. So you continue to spend money in that category and it's a problem, right? Like you don't know how much it should have had, not had. So if you're a big company, medium-sized company, you've been around for a while, you're trying to do something new, you've got a bunch of infrastructure in place, a bunch of people, a bunch of things that are um, just kind of the way we've done it before, right? Yeah. So if you want to do something new, I would recommend that you establish a separate, at least a separate budget for it. So you carve okay. out some money and say, this is what we're going to spend on that initiative. And if that initiative needs to use some of the mothership resources, it's even kind of paying for those resources in a way. So there's a passing of that those dollars back and forth okay. so that you know that bucket of money that you've put aside, just like if you were going to do a renovation on your house or you were going to invest in a different part of the stock market or whatever, you wouldn't slowly do that because you would lose out right you'd be like oh my gosh i had no right. idea what we spent right so you got to do the same kind of concept and treat it almost like its own little business now if you were going to do that you have to allow that to run pretty autonomously you can't follow the same rules um, i've been in several of these kind of uh, organizations where we were the carved out group and we would even have separate space so they would put us in a separate place. Like we weren't even as much part of the same culture that allowed us to like do things different. Okay. Because the intent is to do something different. So question, yeah. carved out group. Yeah. Who determines that? Who is that? Who makes that Well, group? you need to have a logical representation of all the things that would make it up almost like a small company, right? So if okay. it's, you've got to have someone, if it's a new product, like a product person, and you're gonna have a marketing person potentially, and a, like a general manager for it, if it's got a technology build, things that are shared, like maybe HR, finance, some of those, those don't have to move over. Those don't make sense, because they're just a, it's just something you're kind of borrowing from the larger organization, and it's part of the umbrella that it's providing. But anything that's discreetly part of the new idea should live separately and have a separate set of, you know, responsibilities and identity and all that, because if not, it keeps getting drug in and you sure. just, you can't, you, you mix them. And the funny thing about this is this advice is true of doing anything new within a company. So if we want to look, we're talking operations, but we want to talk marketing, we walk into a lot of companies who have no marketing right <laughs> like they've never thought about it they yeah. didn't think it was a thing they needed to do they thought that they're b2b so it's not important 
if you just take some dollars and say, we're willing to spend this much towards marketing, and then you need to trust an organization to come in and take those dollars and do the right thing for you, you're going to be much happier than trying to take, you know, John, who's also doing accounting and have him start doing your social media or have right. Susie, who's responsible for HR, you know, start writing blog posts. Like it's, it's a, always a secondary thing, you know? So if you're a big company and you're trying to do something new, everybody knows the big company is the one paying all the bills. And if they're not designated, separated, given some boundaries, that bleed just happens. It just happens and you never know that it was successful or not. Same thing with a new department. And the reason I say like, I kid when I say this, but I really mean it. I, I think companies spend on marketing last. Like it's yeah. the last thing they put in place. And we've got to know it by the number of emergency phone calls we receive. Oh, I got yeah. this thing coming up in a month. And could you do some marketing for us? And we're like, could you have called us six months ago? Right. We've been right. a lot better, right? right. We're going to have a real problem here. Like that's going to be, you know, we haven't laid the groundwork. So it's the last thing they add. And it's the first thing they cut. Marketing yeah. is the last thing they add. And it's the first thing they cut. And it's kind of, it's kind of a crazy because like that's the way you're getting your message out there. It's the way that you're staying relevant right. in front of people. And, you know, you'll notice a lot of smart brands and a lot of smart companies do marketing well before they have a product. Mm -hmm. Like they'll talk about something that they're not exactly sure when like Tesla, like, oh, it'll be available in a year, right? And they're already marketing it and trying to get you yeah. to sign up for it. I mean, that happens all the time with some very successful companies. And then they'll bring it out as an alpha or beta test. And it's just a smarter way to don't go build it all and make it all perfect and then decide you're going to start talking about it. Right. Yeah. Because you're behind. So if you are the CEO of this 5,000 employee company yeah. and you have done this group and you say, okay, we're going to move forward, then what's the process of successfully disseminating that, if you will, from the top to bottom? Well, you, the way I've seen it work successfully is, is really establishing it as a, almost a skunk works. So it's like a separate thing. You either have it invest dollars over and let those dollars live that way, or it's just like a budget that works separately. Mm -hmm. And then we did a couple of skunk works where no one knew that we were who they were investing in because they were trying something so new, so different that if it didn't work, it might tarnish the brand. Okay. And so if it didn't work, they just pretended it like it never happened. Yeah. Right? We were this little, we don't know who those people are, right? But if it did work, we were acquired by the mothership. Okay. Where all along we were receiving funding from the mothership and you yeah, know, that kind of thing. So it's it's like it's sort of an entrepreneurial people talk about that. It's the best of both worlds. So you've got this lean group and a lean group's like 20, 25 people. We're not talking a lot, you okay. know, like a small group. Uh, several of mine were like 10. 10 person that they'd bring us into a 600 person organization and yeah. take 10 of us and put us out separately and say, okay, we can't get this done because we're too big and we got too much going on. Mm -hmm. We're going to set you up separately. We're going to give this project to you and you, you have six months. Like you have six months to show us that this is going to work or not. If it doesn't work, no big deal. You know, we'll, we'll stop or whatever, but we do want to try it and we know we cannot try it inside the existing framework. So if you, if you are one of these big companies, how do you also know it's time to make some sort of change, right? Because again, if you're if you're the regular nine to five employee working in a cubicle, you're not dealing or seeing the same thing as a CEO is, and then vice versa. So the regular nine to five may see a different problem than say the CEO does. So right. what is a communication like that look well, I, like? I would say that if you're an established company and you don't have some kind of like skunk works that's established separately in some way that you're probably already in trouble mm. <laughs> because all the innovation is going to come out of that. And yeah. those types of people that work for those companies are more entrepreneurial. They would probably be running their own thing at that time anyway. And that's why you see so many kind of Fortune 500 Global 2000s stumbling or losing market share to yeah. up and comers. So cannibalize yourself. Right, like create that thing, have some thumbs in it. Go, or you can go find a startup. Like the problem you have when you try to find somebody and acquire them is they're typically so proud of what they've done that the asking price may have been more than if you just set up a, yeah, you know, a separate group. Yeah, and they often don't even know what the heck they're doing. Right, right. Like, I mean, yeah. so you've got some infrastructural knowledge and some expertise where you're like, we need to try this thing, but we're going to do it in a little little microcosm yeah. right so if you're not doing it today and you're a big company you're probably in trouble 
you're probably in trouble. You're like already behind. It's kind of, yeah. You're already behind. And that's what, why we see the big companies, you know, having a lot of trouble dealing with how quickly things change. Cause you can't do these things by committee. Like yeah. the technology changes so quickly. Right. Yeah. The, and typically when I'm in the Fortune 500 Global 2000 boardrooms and we're talking about marketing technology, like I've had people, you know, talk to me about these things you call drip campaigns, which have been around for years. <laughs> You yeah. got a CMO of a Fortune 500 going, what is a drip campaign? Yeah. I'm like, really? Like, right. really? And it's because they, they're they not experimenting. Yeah. They're doing like what they've done before and you got to have a place to play. Yeah. You have a sandbox. So if you feel that you're on this dangerous ground of death yeah. in your company, death by non-innovation, yeah. uh, and you need some guidance maybe on how to go or taking that communication because sometimes too i feel like a ceo's cmo's sometimes you're a little bit too close yeah and you need to step back or maybe bring someone in like lager partners to help you see the full vision and take it from start to finish connect with us on social media we are lager partners ligerpartners.com podcasts i mean we've got a lot of resources and available. we can help you unleash the beast we will Unleash the beast. Unleash the beast.